Okay, so now we're looking at solving log equations, uh, which is the last bit of the logs and exponentials topic. So we'll go for a few examples of this. It is relatively straightforward once you've got the log rule sorted. So like we saw before, if you want to solve 2 to the power x equals 3, the first way we can do that is exponential form. So the first way we can do that is writing from exponential, which is in the moment, into log form. <coughs> and we can use my whole... Um, log to the base 5 25 is 2. So we can say log to the base 2 of 3 equals x. And then solve that on a calculator. I think we did it before. So 1.585. Um, there's another way we can do so, which is using our rules. So People always forget this for some reason. So we're going to log each side of the equation. And some of you might, some of you might be wondering why I haven't written a base on these. So if you, don't, if you don't write the base on a log, it means base 10. So let's just write that at the top. If you don't write a base, it means base 10. The reason we use base 10 is it's most common when we're dealing with sciences, so it's quite a well used base. And your calculators will have just a log button rather than a log base button. Um, so, what we can do now is just split this up. You could do this with any base, but it's just easy just to write log and be a bit lazy and not put the base 10 in. So, once we've got this, we can now use the power rule. So, log each side, now we're going to use the power rule x log 2 equals log 3. Now we can divide by log 2 to get x log 3 over log 2. If you type that into a calculator, you will still get x equals 1.585. So either method is fine. Uh, it depends on what you prefer. That might be slightly quicker. Students always forget this, but this is a very useful method, especially in your second year. So do try and use both of them, just so you keep both practiced. Um, right, next we'll look at solving log quadratics. This is very much an exam favourite. So this does come up most years in the exam papers. Um, and it relies on a bit of your indices knowledge as well. So, 2 to 2x, you might have seen this in some of the assignments. We need to be able to rewrite this using our indices. So we could say that this is 2 to the x all squared, because we know the rule for two um, indices with a bracket between them is the them together. So 2 times x is 2x, so x times 2 is 2x. So we can write that like this. And without being able to do that step, you will never be able to solve these questions. So always remember, something like that, you can write it like this. Then we've got 6 lots of 2 to the x plus 5. Zero. Okay, now some of you will spot that that's a quadratic, some of you might not. So what we're going to do next is say we're going to let y equal 2 to the power x. So here we're going to end up with y squared minus 6 lots of y plus 5 plus 0. And that definitely looks like a quadratic. So we're going to solve this using our brackets. So we get y, y minus 5 minus 1. So we end up with y equals 5, y equals 1. But remembering, we want to solve it for x. x is the value started with, x is the thing we need to solve. So we're going to put these back into our y equation here. So we get 5 equals 2 to the x, or 1 equals 2 to the x. And now we need to use logs to solve for these. So at the top one, we can say log to the base 2 of 5 equals x. And here we've got log to the base 2. Need my calculator for the top one, so log to base 2 of 5 gives us 2.32. And this one, 2 to the power something is 1, well I know that x has to be 0, because 2 to the power 0 is 1. Cool. Right, a couple more of these, or oh, one more of these. Okay, so I'm going to solve 3 to the power x plus 1 equals 9,000. So again, we're going to log 
both sides of this equation. Now I'm going to use my power rule to bring this down. Now I'm going to divide by log 3. And then subtract 1. And again, need to calculate for this one. And we get x is 7.28. Cool. Right, so that's it really for solving logs. Um, one more thing is just to look at the sketches. So I think we've looked at these already back when we did sketching graphs. So what I think is log of x, some of you will remember there's an asymptote at x equals zero, and our log graph looks like that. Interesting feature of this graph is that you can't get any negatives. So if you ever typed in log of a negative number, you would get a math error on your calculator because you can't log negatives. So it's got on here no negatives. So if you're ever solving a log equation and your answer is something like log of minus five, that isn't a possible solution because you can't get negatives for a log function. Um, the inverse of this, which kind of links in because it's an exponential. Which has an asymptote at y equals zero. It looks very similar. This is y equals 10 to the x, which is an exponential graph. And next week we'll be looking at a very particular exponential graph and very particular log graph. Uh, just to clarify here, no negatives, I mean no negatives in the x-axis. Obviously for this one there's no negative y's. That's the most important point. When you're solving log equations, you cannot get any negatives. Cool, all right, that's it for logs. Uh, so try the quizzes uh, next week, moving on to specific logs and specific exponentials.